Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Answering your questions as always are Anders Motz at Tonkraftwerk in Austria. Hello, hello. And Andy Hagerman, Avid's training architect. How you doing? And myself, Dave. We are hoping uh, to help you uh, understand and get the best out of Pro Tools. Um, in today's episode, we're looking at a question from Shaban. I hope that's uh, correct. Uh, and the question is this. Sorry, but can someone explain to me what does pad to frame boundary do? So, um, Anders, uh, what are pads, what are frames, um, what are boundaries, and why are they all important to each other? Yeah, uh, uh, first off, Shaban, what a, what a great question. And uh, it might be important to you, but it also might not. When you're working with video and video editing software like Media Composer, the resolution of Media Composer is one frame. So if you want to cut something, you can only cut on whole frames, which makes total sense if you're working with the video. But music and audio and Pro Tools has a resolution basically of sample length, which is usually at least 44,100 of a second, which means that we have far greater resolution. And uh, the pad to frame boundary feature basically pads to the closest frame, uh, whole frame, so that uh, when you put this audio into Media Composer, it will start on a frame, but will be padded so that, so that the audio, actual audio, audio starts where you musically or audio uh, sync-wise need it to start. Uh, Andy, I think you've got the demonstration uh, uh, lined up, right? I do. And, and let me back up because as teachers, we often kind of, we tend to equate frames and, and samples. And sometimes we, we, we define samples by saying, hey, a sample of audio is like a frame of video. And, and conceptually, it's a good starting place, but it's very, very inadequate when you really start digging in. The normal sample rate, the smallest bit of time that we can do, the temporal resolution of, of most audio for film is 48 kilohertz. So 48,000 individual points in time between each second. Film has a frame rate of 24 frames per second, which means you can only cut a second into 24. So in audio, we're dealing with scalpels. And in video, they're dealing with butter knives in terms of being able to chop up fine bits. So the thing is this, when we deliver audio to a video person, we want to deliver it in a way that they can place it correctly. And so I have set something up here. I've got a small little sine wave and each of these grid lines is a frame. My grid resolution is one frame. And I want you to notice a few things before we start to demonstrate things. The first thing is my audio doesn't start or end on a frame. The second thing, and I want you to stick a pin in this, both of these edges of the clip are closer to the middle frame than the outer frames. There's a point of confusion that can come in. If I was just bouncing this effect or if this was a music track and I was just bouncing it, no problem. I don't need to pad anything, right? In fact, I probably shouldn't. But if I was sharing this with a video person or I was delivering something for QC or, or doing post-production workflows in general, then if I was to bounce just this clip, then it would be impossible in a video workstation for it to be positioned correctly. So... How do we deal with this? Let's deal with it in two ways. And I think this is where he asked the question was in the bounce mix dialog box. So that's the first place. By the way, it's not the most common place in my experience, but it's the first place we're gonna look at. So I've just got this simple thing and I'm gonna bounce mix option command B. If you take a look here, I've got all the different things I'm gonna do and I'm just gonna name this trash. Um, it's gonna be a wave, it's gonna be a stereo output for whatever it's worth. And you can see over here, I've got the pad to frame boundary checkbox checked. I'm also going to import this after bounce, not because I have to, but because it's going to help me show what's going on here. Now, if I was quantizing this to the nearest frame, that clip would disappear because it's closer to this middle frame than it is the outer frame. Instead, what we do is we pad. So it will always round to the nearest frame outward. Now, let me just show you what you're going to wind up with. 
I'm going to click the bounce. It bounces. I'm going to put it on a new track here. Boink. There we go. I'll drag this up here. And if I put myself in grid mode, and my grid is, again, one frame, you'll see here that it begins on the next outer frame. It ends on the next outer frame. And sample for sample, it's aligned in the center. And by the way, why does it look higher here than in the stereo? That's because of the pan law, right? So don't worry about that. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about here, but don't get stressed about it. But if I zoom in, you'll see here that sample for sample accurate, but it's padded outward to the nearest frame boundary. Guys, talk to me. I'd, I'd just like to say that it's the internet, Andy. The internet will get upset. About what? At the difference, at the differences in the size of the wave. I know, I, I know completely. That's but, why I mentioned but that's, it. But that's the only that's the only thing I can add to the conversation. <laughs> Anders, please continue. No, no I, I I think you explained that perfectly. We can see pad to frame boundaries in both directions in your in your example here, and uh, uh, I think this is easy to understand. Uh, you you said before, Andy, that uh, a bounce to mix. That's one of the places where you will see this. Uh, but there's also another application, and that has to do with the exchange between Pro Tools and video editing platforms, uh, primarily Media Composer, because these two are really have a, a, an excellent uh, feature, so that you can exchange material between them, and you usually do that using an AEF export. And I, 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 I suppose this is where you were going next, Andy. Is that correct? It's exactly where I was going, right? Um, so, so just to back up just a little bit, the bounce mix dialog box, that would be great if you're delivering individual stems, right? So if I've got a, a dialog mix or a music mix or the whole mix that I wanted to just give to somebody else and they're going to lay it in with the video, that might be a situation where I would pad my bounce. But like I said, that's not usually what I what I normally do. That's not what I do the majority of time. The majority of time, what I'm doing is I'm sharing my session with individual tracks, with individual clips on them, with a video workstation. And that video workstation does not have the ability to be sample accurate. It can only be frame accurate. So how do we deal with that? Well, I've got my track selected. I would select multiple tracks if, if I had multiple tracks to share. But I'm going to go over here to File, Export, Export Selected Tracks as New AAF or OMF File. Now, I'm always going to choose AAF. That's the more commonly used one these days. It's certainly the better one. And there's two ways that you can make sure that you're padding. One is to enforce Media Composer compatibility. And if I click this checkbox, there are certain limitations, one of which is that I have to quantize it to the frame boundaries. Or if I don't enforce Media Composer compatibility, then I can choose over here whether or not I want to quantize my edits to the frame boundaries. And here's where I take a little bit of issue with the way this is worded. It's not quantized, it's padded. Because as I said before, in this situation, the closest frame is in the middle of the clip. And so if it was quantizing, that frame would disappear entirely. It pads, and I'm gonna prove it to you. So I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm going to pop this and I'm just gonna call this. And I'm just gonna save this on my desktop. Great. Now I've saved this on my desktop and I'm going to import this. And the way that you import an AAF file or an OMF file is the same as importing session data. File menu, import session data. And I'm going to go here to the AAF file instead of a Pro Tools file. I'm going to go ahead and just import this to a new track. Easy, easy. And you'll see it's padded it outward. It didn't quantize. Again, I take issue with the wording. I think it's a little bit misleading, but you can see here that I've got right over here, and over here, I've got the individual frame boundaries. So it's padded to the frame. And just to go slightly off topic here, it's actually created two little clips and not one. And that is because the makers of Pro Tools Avid, of course, realized that you might want to trim out something or do an edit or, or do fade-ins, fades out. Uh, so what Avid does or, or Pro Tools does is it creates little one frame files so that you can accommodate these and actually move the starts of, of things, which is a genius concept. Yeah, it doesn't affect the waveform. It doesn't affect the way it sounds. It just gives you more editing flexibility, not to us, the Pro Tools guys, but to the Media Composer guys. The word quantize in, in that export thing, it, it is criminally used. Yeah, it's... <laughs> not going to lie. 
Because it's not quantizing. It's not quantizing. I mean, it's, it's one of a handful of things that Avid just says wrong. Um, and and it's, it's infuriating to those of us who are a bit pedantic when it comes to language. Um, but I, as long as you understand what the behavior is, you'll know that there's no problem. Everything's fine. Um, it, it does it does what you want it to do, which is why people use it professionally. Um, and the only reason um, that I can think of, and feel free to challenge me on this, um, is when you're working with a post-production workflow. Um, if you're working in music, then, then that pad is something you certainly could do. It's not going to do anything necessarily evil, but it's not necessary at all, in my experience. Do you guys feel differently? Uh, no. Um, I... I, I... I'm, this is something I regularly use, of course. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it's great. I have no experience of which to speak, and therefore I have nothing to add. <laughs> but does it make sense to you? Do you understand the logic behind it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. I understand there you go. the behavior, and, and now I know uh, it, it confirms to me why I probably won't need it <laughs> in the work that I do. <laughs> well, uh, until the day that you, you do, never know. right? You never you know. know. Until you know. the day you do. You know, it's you, you never say never um because you know, as I I was a tuba player back in the day, I made a living blowing warm air through a long metal tube. I never thought I'd need to know uh, stuff like this and until the day you do. Well, so, considering, so and we're here to help you considering with those what I'm looking at right now, Andy, you're still blowing hot air down a, a metal tube. <laughs> <laughs> You're a nurturer. <laughs> awesome stuff. Um, thank you. That was, that was an interesting question, actually, and interesting uh, answers as well. Thank you very much, you guys. Um, so uh, if you got a little bit out of this episode, uh, hit uh, the thumbs up video on uh, on the video. It really helps us, um, and it helps the reach uh, for the video get it out to other Pro Tools users. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the bell icon icon to notify you every time we upload our latest videos. If you head over to ProToolsAnswers.com, uh, you can find a little bit about uh, what's going on over there, and one day I'll get to update it. And uh, you could, but you can find out a lot about our Pro Tools in uh, Pro Tools Answers Inner Circle, and we're a community-funded channel, and we have a lot of fun with our Inner Circle members at the monthly masterclasses, and, and our wonderful Discord community uh, as well. So if you fancy getting involved in that and helping support our channel and our work, uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. So all leads me to say is thank you to Anders. Thank you, Dave. And thank you to Andy for blowing warm air, warm air down a metal tube. <laughs> my pleasure always. <laughs> uh, my name's Dave. Uh, we'll see you next time. This is Pro Tools Answers. And that's about as much as I can contribute to this episode. So we're out. 